Welcome back to Sip the Taylor Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today is January 30th, 2024. These are the four things that came across my desk that I felt to be newsworthy for the Ravens flock for today. First things first, a lot of the Ravens coaches are getting interviewed at different spots, but the main piece, the main cog that I think is almost inevitable is Mike McDonald to Seattle. Now, I was watching the insiders earlier, and they reported that Mike McDonald has been blowing people away in his interviews. Listening to that clip, and I'm going to show the clip in a second. After this clip came out, there was some news that Ben Johnson, the Lions OC, dropped out of consideration for that job, which makes me think that the job is pretty much Mike McDonald's. Let's take a listen to what the insiders had to say about Mike McDonald's interview process. Then I'll come back and kind of wrap this part up. Yeah, and, and the Mike McDonald one is fascinating to me because, first of all, I've talked to a couple teams who interviewed him. It sounds like he has been really dynamic in some of these interviews. I had one uh, person involved with one of the head coach searches who said this was the best interview we had by far. He is young. He is bright. Sort of the defensive Sean McVay is how he was described to me. And the fact that Seattle was willing to wait until after the Super Bowl to talk to him gives me Shane Steichen vibes. That makes me think he is a really, really strong candidate in, in Seattle. We will see where it goes today, but certainly that is one to watch. With Ben Johnson dropping out of the race for the Seattle job, I don't think there's anybody standing in the way of Mike McDonald taking the Seattle job unless he decides to stay in Baltimore. I don't think he wants to go to Washington. I think Seattle is more of a draw to him because of what they have defensively and, you know, the pieces they have offensively too. They they have a lot more in place in my mind than Washington does. I don't know what the cap looks like. I don't know what the, the their draft picks look like, but I think they have more of a chance organizationally than Washington. So I think that's the draw for him. And I think if he leaves, I think he's going to Seattle. I don't know if Baltimore is trying to put together a package to keep him. I wholeheartedly think or hope that they would be doing that. Maybe give him a head coach in waiting or assistant head coach, but he's not the only assistant coach that may be out the door. So not only is the roster probably going to look different, the coaching staff may look different too. Second thing, Rex Ryan absolutely lit up the game plan for the Baltimore Ravens Sunday. And I say game plan, but I don't necessarily think it was the game plan. I think he's lighting up the results or the pass run ratio from Sunday. Let's take a look at what, uh, listen to what Rex Ryan had to say about the run pass ratio from Sunday. Yeah. This is the stupidest game plan I've ever seen. And you know what, Greg Roman, every single person needs to apologize to you because you got blamed for everything about what was wrong in Baltimore. And it wasn't you because this this new guy that we uh, have praised the hell out of. Todd Munkin. Yeah, Todd Munkin. By the way, with the new guy. You, you don't have Tom Brady. Do you realize your quarterback is Lamar Jackson? not Tom Brady. What in the hell are you doing dropping back 82% of the time? This is a team that led the NFL in rushing attempts. They had six whopping rushing attempts yeah. to, the, to the running backs. So Spike's like, I'll put every little dude. Hey, RC, you go play D tackle because they ain't going to run the ball. What the hell are you doing? Okay, so Now he's absolutely right. I agree with him. At no point in this game were we getting like blowed out by three or four touchdowns where you had to abandon the run. They went up seven. We scored, made it seven seven. Then they went up, you know, 14 seven. Then they eventually went up 17 to seven. Ten point game. At no point in the game until late in the fourth quarter was there or the run should have been negated. You still should have ran the ball. It's like no point you should have been dropping back 82% of the time. I can't remember but two runs in the second half, maybe three. And I love our quarterback, but the game plan for him to just consistently drop back, that's not a winning formula for us. It's not. So Rex Ryan was kind of spot on. Now, the name calling probably went too far, but his analysis of that, I agree with him. We should not have been dropping back 82% of the time. Officially, we lost to the Kansas City Chiefs Sunday, and so now it's draft season in the mines. 
the Ravens officially have the 30th draft pick. Uh, what should we pick up with that 30th draft pick is hot and heavy on a bunch of Ravens' um, minds right now. Some people saying O-line. Some people saying receiver. Um, it's a bunch of different things out there. It's a bunch of different prospects that people are throwing out there. Uh, some people are saying forget the draft picks, trade and get this guy, or, you know, whatever. But it's that time of the year where really the season don't stop. We say off season, but we don't have off season. It's draft season. The only real off season is right there in that July to August. That's the off season. So we transition. We transition from the regular season, the playoffs, to draft season. We have an off season for the, those one to two months right there, July to August. Because as soon as draft is over, you know you're going to OTAs and all that stuff. So the Ravens have officially have the 30th pick. Put in the comment section what you would like to like them to do with that 30th pick. And I think we have eight picks overall. Should we keep all those picks? Should we trade them for people? You know, who should we pick up? What positions should we prioritize over other? Put that in the comment section. And lastly, let's talk about the Kid Gallery. The Kid Gallery put a lengthy Twitter post on uh, X or Twitter, whatever you call it these days, about how the different sides of the Ravens flock is viewing our loss. And he mentioned there basically are two sides to the coin. There's the conspiracy theorists, people that are not accepting what happened. And then there are people that are saying, hey, the offense folded, didn't do what they needed to do to win the game. And he went on to explain his point of view, made some valid points. Let's take a look at a few of the highlights of, of that clip from Gowie. And if you don't follow Gowie, he is an amazing, amazing entertainer. Uh, he has a partnership with the NBA, does a lot of stuff with All-Star Weekend. Uh, he's a Baltimore Ravens fan. He's very active with the fans and does stuff with the Ravens also. So if you don't follow him, give him a follow. But let's take a look at the clip and see what he had to say about the different views from the Ravens' loss. Block, I need y'all to come to the front of the congregation because we need to have a conversation about how some of y'all are handling this loss. Now, right off the bat, the fan base is divided because one side of the fans want to live in this imaginary world and the rest of us are being realistic about what took place. Now, I need to tell y'all, and I'm really going to emphasize this, the hill that you are willing to die on as a fan does not make you a better or realer fan than the next person. I repeat, the hill that you are willing to die on does not make you a better or realer fan than the next person. Now I say this because people who are willing to die on the hill that the refs rigged the game or the NFL rigged it so Taylor Swift can be in the Super Bowl so they can make more money are getting mad at the ones who are looking at it and just being like, nah, bro, we just ain't, you feel me? We just ain't played the way we were supposed to play. And you know the answer. The Ravens offense did not perform the way that they needed to perform in order for us to win. That's the answer, bro. So stop being weird, bro. And that's all I got to say. This imaginary world y'all live in and trying to find these different scenarios on why we lost and trying to downplay the Chiefs in this game, they effed up our whole game plan. You a dumbass if you think that John Harbaugh and Todd Munkin went into this game and said, you know what, we gonna run the ball six times and win. Hell no, they didn't think that. They saw the Chiefs' time of possession. They saw how they easily scored two straight touchdowns, and they panicked. They stepped away from their game plan. They got uncharacteristic, and they lost. It's okay to admit that. For the people who aren't Ravens flock that happen to watch this video, and you think that I pivoted on Lamar Jackson and his amazingness, nah, he's still him. <laughs> Lamar Jackson is still him. Listen, Lamar Jackson is still the second best quarterback in the NFL behind Patrick Mahomes. He lost to Patrick Mahomes. I can live with that. You feel me? You see, if we go record for record, stat for stat, accolade for accolade, name a quarterback that got a better resume than Lamar Jackson, not name Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. And right now, we don't know what Aaron Rodgers is up to or what he will look like when he returns. So that being said, who does that make number two? Oh, okay. All right, and that's all I got for you today. So if you are not a subscriber and you like the content, please like the video. Likes are free. They cost you nothing. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of this content drops. Uh, we're, we don't have any more games. It's officially draft season. The first draft video will drop today at some point. 
Uh, if you don't follow the second channel, please do so because we're going to have draft videos over there. And the second channel is More Sip to Tally. So like, comment, subscribe to this channel and More Sip to Tally. And just share, man. Share the content. Who you going for in the Super Bowl? Put that in the comments also. 49ers, Chiefs, who you got? I'm going Chiefs for reasons I'll share later. <laughs> Peace and love, man. See y'all.